We now have these two second generation BTK inhibitors approved for the treatment of CLL. We have Zanabrutinib and Acalabrutinib. Um, and unfortunately, um, they, all, they will not be compared head to head in a randomized phase three trial anytime soon. So the question is, um, which one is better? Are they equal? Is one worse? And uh, in order to do that, we performed a, uh, matching, a matched adjusted indirect comparison of Acalabrutinib and Zanabrutinib using patient level data from Elevate TN. Um, and we compared it to aggregate data as presented per the Sequoia trial. So to remind you what the Elevate TN study was, it was acalabrutinib as monotherapy or acalabrutinib plus obinutuzumab versus chlorambucil plus obinutuzumab. And the uh, Sequoia trial was zanabrutinib versus bendamustine plus rituximab. Um, now, when you want to perform an analysis like this, um, it's really a cross-trial comparison that uses uh, a statistical weighting method, method um, to make uh, the analysis more uh, realistic and accurate. And uh, what this is is a unanchored make because both of the drugs that were used in each trial were compared to a treatment arm that weren't equal. So chlorambucil plus obinutuzumab is not equal to benamustine rituximab. So you had to use what we call an unanchored make as opposed to an anchored make. Um, and what we do is we look at uh, prognostic and predictive factors um, that predict outcomes for your patient level data. And you then weight each patient based off of the prognostic factors that predict outcomes on the patient level data to match the data from the aggregate data from the published trial of Sequoia. So in this way, we're basically taking all of the baseline patient characteristics and making them look more like the Sequoia study. So that way, it kind of takes away the bias of a cross-trial comparison. It doesn't completely get rid of the bias, but it's a statistical method to make sure that the baseline characteristics are as equal as possible. So uh, what we did was we did this for both acalabrutinib and acalabrutinib plus obinutuzumab, and we compared it to zanabrutinib. And ultimately, what we found was not at all really too surprising. Um, when we looked at acal plus obin, it looked like it was superior in terms of its efficacy for PSF, PFS versus zanabrutinib, which wasn't a surprise because when you look at the Elevate TN study, ACAL plus OBIN does look like it has a superior PFS benefit, but that study wasn't meant to describe that comparison between ACAL plus OBIN versus ACAL alone. Um, in addition, the acalabrutinib plus obinutuzumab was more toxic, which also wasn't surprising because when you do a combination study, you always expect that it to be a little bit more toxic than a single agent study. And uh, it looked like there was more um, um, arthralgias, neutropenia, and, and headache, which is expected with acalabrutinib versus anabrutinib when you use the acalabrutinib plus obinutuzumab. Now, when you compared the acalabrutinib monotherapy versus the zanabrutinib monotherapy, ultimately the PFS in treatment naive patients was the same. So it looked like they were both had the same efficacy and a very similar um, side effect profile. So uh, in general, we just saw more headache with the acalabrutinib, but everything else looked pretty much very similar when you compared acalabrutinib versus zanabrutinib in the frontline setting. Um, I think the other thing to note here is that we did overlay the Kaplan-Meier curves of the original study to look at just a standard cross-trial comparison to see if there was any differences between the two arms. And basically, even after we did the adjustment, there wasn't much change in the PFS uh, for acalabrutinib or acalabrutinib plus obinutuzumab. So the conclusion from this study um, is that using a unanchored um, make analysis to compare ACAL plus OBIN or ACAL to Zanabrutinib, we found the um, efficacy to be same amongst the monotherapy treatment arms and uh, efficacy to be proved with the acalabrutinib plus obinutuzumab, but the acalabrutinib plus obinutuzumab was a little bit more toxic. So in, in lieu of having any randomized phase three clinical trial to support this, um, this is the, probably the best we're gonna get in terms of comparing these two agents.